two, three, four, Juliet Bravo, fly straight out, clear Charlie, runway nine or clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, straight out, runway nine or sorry about that earlier. One, two, three, four, Juliet Bravo. No problem. What's the first thing you want to make sure you have plenty of when you are doing a long trip over the water? Yes, fuel. Whether over the water or over land, this is a perfect example of why you want to plan out your cross-country trips down to the last detail, whether you are going across the state or are going out of the country. Plan, 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 because problems will happen and you need to be prepared. You need a plan B, C, D, E, and F to make sure you've got everything covered. This was the first leg of the Cessna 206 delivery to Manaus, Brazil, and it was from Fort Lauderdale Executive to Provo, Turks and Caicos, then refuel, and then on to Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic for day one. We started off with 100 gallons of fuel from Fort Lauderdale Executive and had planned for a landing in Provo with two hours of fuel, 29 gallons remaining. As I said before, this trip was meticulously planned out, both on ForeFlight and Excel. This is what was said to me before we left. Everything was planned out in great detail. And a ForeFlight plan was also sent to me a week before our departure, which was 90% of the work. From this, I was able to get my weather picture ahead of time, get some snapshots of the latest weather radar right as we left, get updated METARs, and I also had a chance to review every airport we would be landing at, as well as possible alternates. So right from the beginning, I knew the runway lengths, services available, ground frequencies, and even telephone numbers, and I had them all pulled up ready to go if we needed them. You want to be prepared for any emergency because, as I said before, if it can happen, chances are it will and it did. About an hour into our flight, I was looking at the fuel gauges and something didn't appear right. All right, so yeah, we must, yeah, so I'm, I've been watching this and it, it does look like we've got a leak because I've been just watching it go down the whole time because it was full when we started, so. Uh-huh. Um, and this, the, um, this section of the EDM just runs off a computer. It doesn't run off yeah, the gauges. I know. Yeah, so... Um, you have to, to realize if the gauges are yeah. first full. So, it's um, true. Yeah, so it looks like it over here, where it looks like we're at 20... It's at about 20, 25 gallons. We're at 11 gallons an hour, so we've got... We've got a... 25 gallons, uh, I guess, about 10, uh, two hours uh, of fuel, not too much of a reserve, and uh, we're 30 miles away, 12 minutes out. The issue? Do we have a leak? In just under two hours of flight, at 12.9 gallons an hour, our gauges told us we only had two hours, or 30 gallons of fuel left, so we really needed to get on the ground soon and verify, do we have a leak, or is it failed fuel senders or something else? Approach November 234, Julia Bravo. November 234, Julia Bravo, Nassau. Yeah, uh, we would. Uh, we have a suspected fuel leak uh, over here, so uh, we've just uh, altered it or diverted our course to uh, you, and presently we are uh, two zero miles uh, southeast of Nassau at uh, 3,000 feet. Hi, right, 4 Julie Bravo, and uh, you can fly at you know, 300 for runway 10. You can expect landing on runway 10. 3007 is the QNH, and your radar contact 20 Southeast NASA. Okay, fly heading 300, expect runway 10, and we do have India. Roger, break out to Oscar Papa, join the right base now to runway 10, and uh, maintain best forward speed. Best forward speed, runway 10, base 234 Julie Bravo, thanks. Now, if you have to stop for an emergency, Nassau in the Bahamas is the place. The FBO is beautiful and they were extremely helpful and all we really needed to do was get out, dip our tanks. If we had all of our fuel, we would just gas up and go. If not, 
we would see how bad the leak is and plan from there. Bravo, where will you be parking? Uh, could you give us a parking space? We just need to climb out and visually check our fuel tanks. Roger, vacate right kilo. Contact ground one one7 Right kilo, contact ground two one point seven. Julia Bravo. Charles six four three Melia, vacate echo ground point seven. Echo ground point seven Lima, and this. Where? Right on kilo, which right. is right here. And then we'll contact ground oh, uh, one two one point seven. One two one point seven. Uh, we landed at 34. Nassau ground, November 234 Juliet Bravo on Kilo. November 234 Juliet Bravo, taxi into Odyssey. Taxi into Odyssey, 234 Juliet Bravo. Odyssey, this is November 234 Juliet Bravo coming off a of Kilo. We're just pulling into your apron here. We just need to climb out, visually inspect our fuel tanks. We have a suspected fuel leak. We just want to confirm. Roger. After a quick tank dip, we had all of our fuel. And the problem was failed fuel senders. So it was all fixable. A bonus bathroom stop and we were off. November 234, three, Juliet Bravo, runway 14, cleared for takeoff. Cleared for takeoff, runway 14234, Juliet Bravo. Hey, thanks very much for your help. Have a great day. Not a problem, sir. Not a problem. <laughs> for <laughs> her, maybe. <laughs> okay. Oh, looks good. Green. Speed alive. Yep, airspeed alive, confirmed. A little bit more prop here. 70. It was only about a 45 minute delay, but the peace of mind knowing that we did not have a fuel leak was priceless. Now, it's off to Turks and Caicos and the Dominican Republic, and you will find out what you need to fly your own airplane through the Caribbean. And it is a lot more than you may think, which you will see in the next program. So, thanks for watching.